In 2021, finishers aren't always finishers anymore. It's all very well kicking out at 2.9 to create drama and generate the kind of heart-in-mouth moments that make wrestling so great, but the thing is, when your finishing move doesn't finish matches, it's not really a finishing move. Now, the problem isn't universal, as we'll find out from some of the more modern examples on our list, but it definitely exists. I'm Andy for What Culture Wrestling, and here are the 10 most heavily protected wrestling finishers ever. Number 10. Kenny Omega's One Winged Angel The 18th of August 2012. That was the last time that anybody kicked out of the One Winged Angel, and it was done fittingly by Kota Ibushi, Kenny Omega's old friend during their classic KOD openweight title match in DDT. This means that the best part of a decade has now gone into building that one big, cathartic, kick out. High profile rivalries with Kazuchika Okada, Tetsuya Naito, John Moxley and countless others have come and gone. The sanctity of the One Winged Angel has been protected throughout all of them, and while some have come close, Okada's foot conveniently landing under the bottom rope at Dominion 2017 comes to mind, not a single person has kicked out since Ibushi. Saving this almighty rub for whoever dethrones Omega as AEW World Champion may well be on the cards. And when it happens, they're not just going to blow the roof off the building, but reduce it to a smoldering crater of dust and rubble. Number 9. Ox Baker's Heart Punch Ox Baker didn't invent the heart punch, that would be Stan Stasiak, but given that the move in Baker's hands was promoted as a literal kill shot, it has more than earned its spot on the list. In June 1971, Alberto Torres, who may have been competing with a torn pancreas, collapsed while wrestling Baker. He passed away, sadly, a few days later, and this led to promoters attributing the death to the heart punch, putting immense heat on Baker and improving his value as a money-drawing villain. When Ray Gunkel passed away from heart trauma after wrestling Baker the following year, well, the same thing happened, regardless of whether or not the death had anything to do with the match. In Baker's hands, the heart punch spread real, tangible terror, and we may never see its like again. Number 8. Carl Gotch's Gotch-style Piledriver Nicknamed the god of pro wrestling, Carl Gotch was highly protected of the wrestling business, to the point that he considered Harley Race a clown, his words, for his flying headbutt finisher. When you act like a clown, you look like a clown, is what Gotch famously said of Race. Adding that he looked like a kamikaze coming in with his headbutt, saying that he was travelling a trip of no return along a yellow brick road. It's, it's just not believable, damn it! Sound familiar? Well, it really should, because it's the exact same complaint that gets thrown around today at the more innovative and athletic wrestlers doing the rounds. Only this one comes from a guy who popularised his fearsome finisher, the Gotch-style or Cradle pile driver, in the bloody 1950s. And today, Minoru Suzuki is keeping the move alive as a surefire match ender in New Japan. Number 7. Yokozuna's Banzai Drop This one is a pretty easy move to protect, because let's be honest, how the hell are you supposed to kick out, believably, when a man who once tipped the scales at close to 600 pounds has just come crashing down on your chest? The answer is simple, you don't. Nobody kicked out of Yokozuna's Banzai Drop in WWE, and even in his lighter days, it was absolutely devastating. But while it often looked like Yoko was legitimately flattening people with this move, this wasn't the case. Several wrestlers, including Bret Hart, have gone on the record to call Yoko one of the safest people they've ever wrestled, with his feet taking the brunt of the impact for the devastating move. Number 6. Pax Black Arrow whether he has been working as Neville in WWE or as Pac elsewhere, the red slash black arrow has never been truly kicked out of, with the bastard going all out to ensure the protection of his most spectacular move. The closest we came to a kick out was in AEW. In November 2019, referee Bryce Remsburg botched a count while Pac was pinning Trent having hit the move, with the referee swiping his hand away before hitting free, despite Trent never kicking out. It was an awkward moment for sure, but unintentional, and the Black Arrow's level of protection stays intact. 
Mistakes are mistakes, and everybody makes them. That's over 60 years ago. Oh, never mind that part. <laughs> Number five, Randy Orton's punt. The RKO is an all-time great finisher and pretty well protected itself, but it can't compare to the punt in that regard, which is pretty much just a running football kick right to the face. This is Orton's MDK move. When he hits it, your lights are probably going out. It inflicts pure concussive trauma on the opponent and is particularly effective whenever Orton is on one of his psychotic breaks. Rising to prominence during Randy's McMahon murdering build-up to facing Triple H at WrestleMania 25, it was brought back to great effect in 2020. Number 4. Goldberg's Jackhammer when Goldberg was in WCW, the jackhammer was almost insurmountable. Hulk Hogan was the first person to kick out of it, but it was a total mistake. Kevin Nash was supposed to interfere, breaking up the count and resulting in a no contest, but Kevin Nash missed his cue, silly Kevin Nash, meaning Hogan had no choice but to kick out on the 5th of April 1999 episode of Nitro. Up to that point, nobody had even come close, and while The Undertaker and Brock Lesnar have kicked out of it, in Big Bill's later years in WWE, that's an easy sell given that he's now north of 50 years old. Number 3. The Dudley Boys 3D According to their cage match profile, Bubba Ray and Devon Dudley wrestled a total of 1,351 matches as a tag team, but it's probably even more than that in all reality. Nonetheless, it's remarkable to think that according to Bubba himself, the 3D was only ever kicked off by three people. That would be a rough average of once every 450 matches. Masato Tanaka was one of these people, kicking out of it at November to Remember 1998. Then, five years later, a missed Sylvain Grenier Q led to Rene Dupree being forced to kick out of it in a WWE match. Finally, in 2010, Chris Sabin did the deal as Team 3D wrestled the Motor City Machine Guns at TNA Turning Point. The Dudleys lost that retirement match, split up and leapt into a feud, with the kickout given so much significance that it formed the basis of the rivalry. Now that is protection. Number 2. Kenta Kobashi's Burning Hammer there probably should be an asterisk on this one, to be honest, because every single indie wrestler to ever indie wrestle has kicked out of the burning hammer in one way or another. But in Kabashi's hands, the move was the deadliest thing ever. He only ever hit the burning hammer seven times. The first was against his rival, his long-term career rival, Mitsuharu Misawa, and the last was against Kenta. And nobody ever kicked out. It was only ever deployed as a weapon of mass destruction that Kobashi only pulled out when dragged to the deepest of waters, when only a crippling blow would suffice. No wrestler has ever treated it with the same level of respect, and to be honest, that's pretty annoying. Not to go all cornet on you guys, but some things really should be held sacred. The Burning Hammer is one of them. Number 1. Razor Ramones, Razor's Edge the Crucifix Powerbomb is an incredible looking move, and when Scott Hall was hitting it, nobody ever kicked out. Once Razor lobbed you across the ring, you were done. Razor was never the most dominant guy between the ropes in WWE, eating plenty of notable losses throughout his original run, but the Razor's Edge was never kicked out of to generate drama in any of those defeats. Hitting it was a guaranteed win, and while many wrestlers were able to counter or slip out of it, none had the honour of popping their shoulder off the mat before free. If Razor was going to lose or just not win, he simply wouldn't hit the move. It was that straightforward, and it worked to perfection. So that's our list, but what do you guys think, and can you think of any others? Let us know down in the comment section below. After that, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications. Then, you can follow us on Twitter at WhatCultureWWE and myself at AndyHMurray, where you can tell me how wrong I am. Goodbye.